Hi everyone uh, and welcome to this webinar uh, featuring health claims and ads uh, for e-cigarettes. Uh, my name is James, I'm from the digital comms team here uh, and I'm joined by Joe from CAPS Copy Advice Team. Hello Joe. Hello. Uh, so first and foremost I'd like to say thank you for joining us. Uh, e-cigarette rule, uh, sorry, e-cigarette advertising rules continue to evolve as more is understood about these relatively new products. Uh, we know that advertisers want to do the right thing and stick to the rules so I'm delighted to be able to host this webinar with Joe. Um, due to the intricacies of the topic, we're not able to answer questions today, uh, not live ones, uh, as it were, uh, but if you do have any questions, please do get in touch with our copy advice service. Uh, and if we're receiving similar questions from people, we'll look into uh, creating more resources, uh, you know, guidance and stuff to, to help people get the answers they need. Uh, but without further ado, let's get started. Uh, so, Joe, uh, what are we going to cover? What are we going to cover in today's webinar? Thanks, James. Hi, everyone. Well, in terms of what we'll cover today, I'll start with a very quick overview of CAP and the ASA for anyone who isn't familiar with the regulatory system. Uh, then we'll focus on the issue of featuring health claims in ads for e-cigarettes. Um, and this is following CAP's recent removal of the outright prohibition on such claims. So to begin with then, in terms of the advertising regulatory system, there are two sister bodies, CAP, the Committee of Advertising Practice, and the ASA, the Advertising Standards Authority. CAP is the industry facing side of the organization. It writes the ad codes and provides advice and guidance to marketers, agencies, and media owners. And the ASA, who many of you may be more familiar with, is the consumer facing side of the organization, which investigates and rules on potential breaches of the codes. So uh, when someone complains about an ad, that's the bit that's handled by the ASA. Yes, absolutely, that's right. And if you're contacted by the ASA, there's no need to panic. While they're there to investigate and rules on complaints about advertising, they are very reasonable people and will guide you through the process. <laughs> they, are, they are pretty reasonable. <laughs> um, and, and, and it's important to say as well, often complaints can be resolved informally, um, avoiding a full ruling being published, um, particularly if it's the first time an advertiser has been contacted by the ASA and they're willing to work with the ASA to remove or amend problematic ads. Cool, great. Um, so moving on then to the main focus of our webinar today, uh, e-cigarettes and health claims. What exactly is a health claim? Well, a health claim is any claim that a relationship exists between an e-cigarette or one of its constituents and health. So stating or implying that a product provides any kind of health benefit is likely to constitute a health claim. And that includes claims about, about both spe specific benefits and those relating to overall good health or health-related well-being more generally. So to give you some examples, things like good for you, safer than tobacco, safe and makes you feel great are all likely to be considered health claims. And despite the removal of the prohibition on health claims, some of those claims are still likely to be considered problematic, but we'll look into that in more detail a bit later. Uh, so what's actually changed regarding these claims then? Well, until the 8th of November this year, the advertising codes prohibited ads from making health claims about e-cigarettes, and for very good reason. At the time the e-cigarette rules were introdu introduced in 2014, there was no specific regulatory framework for e-cigarettes as a product category. And understandably, there were significant concerns about the variability in quality and safety of products on the market. Now, following advances in product regulation, quality and safety, CAP and BCAP consulted last year um, on a proposal to remove the absolute prohibition on health claims. And following that public consultation, CAP has indeed removed that absolute prohibition. That, uh, just, just quickly, uh, that to me seems like a really great example of the rules developing as more information uh, comes to light. Um, I think in particular, having worked in regulatory environments for years now, it's always pretty surprising to see a rule actually being removed rather than added. Um, so on that point about health claims, uh, does that mean that anyone can make a health claim if their product is otherwise compliant? Well, no, um, it's not quite that straightforward, I'm afraid. Um, while the outright prohibition has been lifted, marketers are only, only able to make health claims if they hold robust product-specific supporting evidence. And even then, there are some claims that are unlikely to be capable of substantiation, so in practice are unlikely to be permitted. We'll have a look at those in a moment. Given the need for evidence, marketers are strongly advised against making any kind of health claims about their products unless they are able to evidence that the specific product they're advertising is indeed capable of providing the claimed benefit. 
Now, where a claim is made about a brand or range rather than one individual product, um, that claim should be based on evidence for the, for the entire brand or range. Now, the evidence required will vary depending on the individual claims and context, uh, but CAP has published some guidance on the type and level of evidence likely to be required by the ASA. So marketers are advised to consider this before making any kind of health claim. And as you can see on the slide here, uh, you can find this guidance by searching for substantiation on our website and selecting the document named substantiation for health, beauty and slimming claims. And uh, just quick, a quick side note there that we will be publishing this webinar on YouTube after we're finished here today uh, and we'll be sure to include any direct links uh, again uh, to all relevant guidance. There is quite a lot available, so make sure you do check it out. Uh, Joe, you mentioned that uh, some, some claims are unlikely to be capable of some substantiation. Uh, can you explain what you mean by that and then maybe give us some examples? Yes, absolutely. Well, as I mentioned, while there's no longer an outright prohibition on health claims in ads for e-cigarettes, they can only be made if supported by robust product-specific evidence. And there are certain claims or types of claims that are unlikely to be capable of such, such substantiation. Now, we understand that the consensus among public health experts is that e-cigarettes are less harmful than smoked tobacco, but are not safe, that the evidence doesn't support any positive health benefits from vaping other than as an alternative to smoking tobacco, and that there is no evidence of a significant health benefit from using e-cigarettes alongside tobacco. Now, given this, as you can see on the slide, uh, claims of absolute safety uh, positive health benefits or claims that explicitly encourage the use of e-cigarettes alongside tobacco are all unlikely to be acceptable. So, for example, claims like healthy, not harmful and safe are likely to be problematic because they imply absolute safety. A claim like good for you is likely to be problematic because it states that there's a positive health benefit to using e-cigarettes. And claims like better for you when used with tobacco and vape as well as you sm as well as smoke, it's better for you, are likely to be problematic because, of course, they encourage the use of both e-cigarettes and tobacco. Now, it's also worth noting here that the rule which prohibits endorsements by health professionals remains in place too. So even if an ad features a compliant health claim supported by robust product-specific evidence, it mustn't feature a health professional endorsing the product or range of products. Uh, just a quick thing, that, very sorry, uh, I accidentally skipped ahead two slides there, so you've got a sneak preview of what's to come. <laughs> um, sorry, uh, on, on that uh, on that topic about uh, claims that, what, what claims can be made, sorry. Well, while this may disappoint marketers, um, CAP hasn't approved and isn't going to approve any claim or type of claim. It's marketers' responsibility to ensure they hold robust evidence to substantiate their claims. And as always, the ASA will assess complaints and supporting evidence on a case-by-case -case basis. So it's really important um, to note that marketers shouldn't view the removal of the prohibition as meaning there is now free reign to make health claims without sufficient supporting evidence. The ASA is likely to require a high level of evidence that relates to the specific product being advertised rather than e-cigarettes in general. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we can't be prescriptive about the evidence marketers will need, particularly given there haven't yet been any ASA rulings which have considered health claims about e-cigarettes following the removal of this prohibition. Uh, but generally speaking, marketers should ensure their evidence is product specific rather than relating to e-cigarettes in general um, and ensure that it's in line with the guidance referenced earlier. Now, marketers may also wish to seek the view of a subject expert when compiling their evidence, given that we're in a very new area here. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're talking about rule changes that were only last month, aren't we? Exactly, yeah. Um, now, I've, I've seen public health bodies uh, make health claims about e-cigarettes. Uh, so can e-cigarette manufacturers and retailers quote those, uh, those, those bodies in their ads? Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, well, we would advise against this um, because the ASA is likely to regard such claims as implied claims about the marketer's advertised product. For example, if an e-cigarette ad references a public health report that states something like, e-cigarettes are safer than tobacco, the ASA is likely to expect the marketer to hold their own robust evidence to demonstrate that the claim can be substantiated in relation to the advertised product, rather than simply relying on the fact that a public health report featured that claim. So does this mean marketers can make smoking cessation claims now? Ah, um, 
no, it doesn't. Um, and this is a question that we were asked quite frequently on, on the copy advice team. Um, it, the, the removal of the prohibition on health claims doesn't permit smoking cessation claims because smoking, ce smoking cessation claims are actually medicinal ones rather than health claims. So what is a medicinal claim? Well, it's not a very snappy definition, I'm afraid. But a medicinal claim is a claim that a product or its constituents can be used with a view to making a medical diagnosis or can treat or prevent disease, including an injury, ailment or adverse condition, whether of body or mind. And medicinal claims remain prohibited by Rule 22.5 unless the product in question is authorised for those purposes by the MHRA. So, for example, any claim that an e-cigarette is capable of helping users to stop smoking or reduce the amount they smoke will be considered a medicinal claim and, the, and, and, and will, ther will therefore be prohibited in, in all ads unless the specific product in question is authorised for that purpose by the MHRA. Um, it's also worth noting here that the process of notifying products to the MHRA does not equate to holding MHRA authorisation to make medicinal claims. Uh, examples of other claims which uh, are likely to be considered medicinal are things like soothes the throat, eases asthma symptoms, um, and something like a remedy for your unhealthy <laughs> lungs. I mean, it seems unlikely that anyone would say that, but you never you know. You never know. Never know. <laughs> um, and it's really important to remember that claims can be implied too. So things like help stop cravings, kick the habit, um, and references to Stocktober are all likely to be considered implied smoking cessation claims and therefore should be avoided. Um, if marketers are unsure whether a claim they'd like to make could be considered medicinal, they're advised to contact the MHRA for guidance. Um, and so a kind of like subcategory of these kind of things. So for, for ads that feature consumer testimonials, uh, is it OK to make those kind of claims like the, the smoking cessation, etc., uh, if the advertiser can prove that it's a genuine quote? Well, the short answer is no, I'm afraid. Um, factual claims in testimonials are considered in the same way as factual claims made about made by an advertiser directly. So marketers shouldn't feature anything in a testimonial that they wouldn't be able to say themselves. Featuring a testimonial that says something like, this e-cig helped me quit smoking, for example, will be problematic even if the advertiser can demonstrate that the person who provided the testimonial did indeed say that because it's a medicinal claim and therefore prohi prohibited by Rule 22.5 unless the product is licensed for that purpose by the MHRA. Okay, great. Uh, so only make health claims if you have robust product-specific evidence and don't make medicinal claims unless the product you're advertising is authorised for that purpose by the MHRA. Absolutely. Uh, so is there anything else that marketers of e-cigarettes should be aware of? Yes, uh, it's important to remember that the rules don't end there. Um, the remaining rules in section 22 of the CAP code will also apply um, and cover things like the requirement to state that a product contains nicotine, uh, the prohibition on featuring content likely to be of particular appeal to children, targeting restrictions, um, and the media prohibitions that apply when it comes to unlicensed nicotine containing products. So marketers should consider section 22 of the code in full before creating ads. And if they would like further, further guidance, the CAP copy advice team is here to help. Uh, we've also expanded our online guidance on e-cigarette marketing, uh, which is due to be published shortly. So keep an eye out on the ASA website uh, for further guidance on all kinds of um, issues that you should, you should consider when, when marketing e-cigarettes. Cool. Okay, um, well, that's all we actually uh, have for now, I know it was short and sweet, but uh, I certainly found it useful. Um, so that was brilliant. Thank you very much, uh, Joe. No Thank problem. you. Uh, I hope that everyone in the audience found this useful. Uh, once again, we're sorry we're not able to take live questions, but if you do have any burning questions to get off your chest, uh, send them to the copy advice team via our website. Uh, and as I said, if we're getting lots of the same question, we'll look to put out some more resources uh, to help people. Likely to be in the new year. Uh, just a reminder that we'll be posting this on YouTube, so please do look out for it and pass it along to any colleagues who might find it useful. Uh, once again, we'll be putting the relevant links in the descriptions, but, but for those of you who aren't here now, the main thing is to get onto the ASA website at www.asa.org.uk and search copy advice. Uh, but that's everything from here, uh, from us here again. So thank you, Joe. Uh, thank you to everyone who joined us, uh, and keep an eye out for our next webinar in the new year. See you later. Bye-bye.